What is going on guys, Jack here and welcome to episode 10 of The Final Push here with Watford and if you missed last episode go check that out before you watch any further I highly recommend you guys check it out, it was an epic 30 minute live commentary and with that said let's go straight into this episode so kicking off from last episode where we did get promoted I really had to focus on strengthening the side uh, Our side was good and we obviously we managed to get promoted scraping second place However, it wasn't it certainly wasn't a Premier League standard team. That's for certain uh, Reading won the playoffs So ourselves are Reading and Brighton are the teams going up into the Premier League this year And I've made a hell of a lot of changes to the side. So let's get straight into these changes so on the transfer history panel you can see some exciting transfers on the end, uh, just a few on the outs that I'm going to draw some kind of attention to. First one was Ferroni going out for 5.5 million I think it was in the end, it was indeed. Uh, quality little bit of a sum to get for this guy. He was a good player for us but he certainly wasn't a Premier League kind of class act player and for 5.5 million pounds I felt I did pretty well to get that amount of money for him. Uh, so yeah, that was the first out. Bit of a good sale I think it wasn't one that I intended to do but there was money to be made there and it made sense to sell him whilst he was hot the only other big one is Lewis McGugan uh, Guggen, yeah Lewis McGugan going out to Reading nothing special about him unfortunately just not good enough for our team £1 million to Reading a little bit more money in the bank uh, to help with the transfers uh, the rest of these transfers here were all loans out uh, of just players going out on loan who um you know, are either young uh, or just weren't good enough for the team in the case of some of these guys who got released. So let's look at the ins. So on the ins, a few guys to tell you about. Kicking things off, Jamie Ruiz. He's now on loan at Blackpool. This guy is a key player for their first team. This guy will be signed from Celtic and he is a class, class act. Um, I think I drew attention to him a few episodes ago, but he's at the club now. 17 years old, going to be playing in the championship. Regular first team football is vital for this guy's development. And I really have faith he can develop into a real class Premier League player. And he could become a star in the Premier League, uh, as hinted at by the um, assistant. So that's a good thing to look out for. We also brought in James Hay, finally, uh, the player from Aberdeen signed. 15 years old. Good little technical stats to kick things off this guy. Bit of potential to improve in the future. Could become a good Premier League centre-back. His 20 determination is definitely going to help him achieve that. And so he's just a good young player to have for the future. The next player and the last region we signed was Elliot Pickup. This was a guy who I couldn't scout. I took a little bit of a punt on. He's not as good as I anticipated. He'll probably never make it in the first team. Um, could become a decent championship player. We actually signed him for, um, how much was it? 9k. Hopefully make a little bit of money on that, but I'm not going to dwell on it too much. And now we move on to the big transfers. Some of these, my God, you're going to be kind of scratching your eyes. So let's kick things off. Big transfer, record club signing, Will Hughes. Signed him from Derby County. This guy, easily one of the best wonder kids you can sign in FM. Uh, managed to get him for £9 million. We had £17 million tr uh, transfer budget this window. Obviously, I did make £6 million selling players, and then that able, enabled me to free up a bit of money to do some transfers. So, Will Hughes, £9 million. Great central midfielder, plenty of room for improvement, definitely, definitely a core component of the future of the club, and he signed a five-year deal. Next player in is Mamadou Sacco, Liverpool centre-back. Not quite sure how I managed to get this guy on loan. Uh, didn't play, I don't think, too much for Liverpool last year. Yeah, only nine appearances for them, averaging a 6.3 average rating. I've loaned him in for a season on £900,000 for the entire duration of his uh, loan. Uh, and I believe, uh, where is it? I believe I have an agreement that I can buy him off Liverpool for £3.2 million at any time, uh, which is certainly something that I'd like to do in the future. But he has big wages at the moment, £60,000 wages. I'm paying half them, so I'm pretty hopeful that if we can stay up this year, he could be a player who we could have for a long time at the club. But great just to have a player of his calibre in centre-back for us this season. Next player in, Carlos Fierro, class act, wonder kid. Uh, FM legend this guy plenty of room for improvement uh, adds to our strike force obviously him and Troy Deeney are two very good players if I just compare these guys so you can get an idea of how similar they are and then bearing in mind Fierro's age Carlos Fierro loads of time to improve he's only 20 years old going to be a key component I think of our first team this year getting that vital first team experience is going to be I mean invaluable for his development so great to get him and for £4.2 million an absolute steal 
The next steal that we got was Adrian from Juventus. £2.5 million for Adrian. Superb. Can't can't express how happy I am to get this player for this price. 20 years old, £2.5 million. Very well spent, if you ask me. Uh, went to Juve last season from Flamengo for £1.7 million. Uh, was sitting in their reserves. I've managed to snap him up. Great signing. Again, another midfielder who has plenty of time to develop. Him, Will Hughes, Fierro. Um, they're all going to be big for us in the future. I'm pretty sure of that. Then we move on to two final transfers, both in on freeze on Bosman's at the end of their contracts. Kicking things off, Sergio Romero, Argentina's number one goalkeeper. This guy got in the World Cup Team of the Year this year. Absolutely class at keeper. His eccentricity is a little bit higher than I'd like, but on a free transfer on £36,000 a week, he's an absolutely superb deal, and I'm hoping he can perform well this season, as he did have a little bit of a shaky season last year at Monaco, but obviously he comes to our club on the back of a superb World Cup. His stats, as I think anyone will agree, are absolutely insane, and he's going to add, alongside Sacco and our final transfer, to our insane defence this year. Speaking of our last defender, it's Reva, Brazilian player, 13 caps, for Brazil, this guy is absolutely superb in real life as well as in FM, and we've managed to get him in on a free, 29 years old, still got three or four years left, I think, of real prime football, and to get him in on a free only on £25,000 a week is an absolute steal. So yeah, he's going to add to our bet defence, uh, and I think you guys will all agree, I've done some very good transfers here for a team just coming up into the Premier League. So looking at our team on paper, this is how we line up this year. Big change to the system. I decided to opt out of the free at the back, especially going up into the Premier League in our first season. Simply put, I don't think it's going to work. So we now line up with this 4-3-1-2 formation. Uh, it suits us very nicely. As you can see, Sacco, Reverend Romero make up a lovely kind of pillar of strength in the centre of midfield. Uh, sorry, centre... Central... Centre of defence and in goal. Jedinak... What I was trying to say was Jadinak in the centre of midfield. Going to act as a bit of a rock as a ball-winning midfielder. Uh, our full-backs, uh, we have um, Ekstrad and Pudil, both players who played for us last year. Neither of them are superb, and I might look to get a replacement in if there's some players available for loan. But Pudil is a decent left-back. He can play there naturally. Um, Hopefully he can perform well there. And then Ekstrad, who played centre-back for us last year, training him at right-back. He's learned and adapted very quickly to the role. And I'm hoping he can kind of, I guess, fulfil the role of full-back for us very nice on the right-hand side. Moving into our midfielders, I've already covered Jedinak is the defensive unit uh, of this midfielder, then surrounding him with some real quality creative players. A deep-line playmaker, we go with Will Hughes. Uh, enough said, quality English player. Uh, centre mid alongside him, we have Adrian, who should be get, being trained to be playing centre mid. He is. Um, and then just ahead of them, we have Forstieri, who was injured for the latter half of last season, but he's an absolute class player. And I think he's a Premier League quality player, and I'm hoping he's going to show that this season for us. Then up front, we go with Fierro and Dini. Dini last season had a great season. 24 goals and 11 assists in the league. Reading tried to buy him off me for £7 million this summer. I rejected that very kindly, and I'm very happy to have him still at the club this year. And then alongside him, we go with Carlos Fierro. 20 years old, Mexican, just come in. Looking forward to seeing this guy pair up with Dini up front, with Faustieri just behind. And all in all, our team is looking so solid for the Premier League this year. So this season is going to be a tricky one. Obviously, first year in the Premier League is always tricky for any side. Um, I feel as if if you've been with a club for a while before you get promoted from the Championship, you've perhaps had time to mould a squad to kind of exactly how you want to play. I think because I've only been at Watford one year and I wasn't able to make as many signings as I would have liked last season, um, I kind of had to buy some real quality players in on a budget. And I think I've done that. You know, Will Hughes at £9 million, is going to be a bargain, I think. He's an easily a player who can double, quadruple his value in a few years. And I think he's a quality Premier League player anyway at his age. Uh, kind of stat-wise anyway. I look at our team now. Defensively, which is always an area which I feel when teams get promoted is always a little bit weak. I feel that with Romero, Sacco and Reva kind of, I guess, leading the charge there, we sh should be good. My main worry comes in the full-back positions where, as I mentioned uh, um Last season, we didn't have any full-back, so Padil got trained there over the end, latter end of last season when I kind of decided it was going to be 
maybe a wise move to switch the front at the back and then Ekstrad uh, could already play kind of slightly competently at right back but we've been training him there and he's picked it up very nicely over the summer. Um, on the bench we go with Ujkani. He had a great season last year in goal but when the off, uh, the option and opportunity to sign Romario came about I couldn't help but kind of I guess accept his uh, services in centre back we go with Angela on the bench this guy is valued at 3.6 million he's got a few clubs interested but I think I'm going to try and sell him maybe for 5.5 million if I can I think this would give me enough money to strengthen the main area of the squad that's of concern which is the full back position as we really lack strength in depth in those areas Anyway, the rest of our bench is made up by Anya, who was at the club last season, didn't play too much, but has something about him, which I think could be of use. Actually made 16 appearances last year, so he's not too bad at all. And then other players, we have Alman Abdi on the bench. Uh, good player, don't get me wrong, but if I just compare him to Will Hughes, the two players are very similar, and if anything, Will Hughes is superior to him, so makes sense to get Will Hughes in whilst I could. Uh, the rest of the players that we have on the bench here, Lassad, last season Tunisian player, played really well for us, but he's been kind of swamped by a bit more quality that's coming to the side this summer. And our other player, Sean Murray, 20 years old, um, still training this guy as a centre mid, but again, whilst he is a fantastic youth prospect, there are now better youth prospects in the side, which I really need to kind of gel into the first team. So anyway, today's first game is against Sunderland. Going to be interesting to see how we get on against it. My general plan this season is to play standard when we're at home and counter when we're away. Uh, I think we're away today. I need to check that actually before we go any further. But I'm pretty sure we're away um, to Sunderland. We are indeed. So I'm going to play counter-attacking. We've got to bear in mind that we are now a small fish in a big pond uh, in terms of playing in the championship. And whilst I think realistically we need to aim for maybe a top 15 finish, uh, it'd be nice to avoid the drop very comfortably this year. So, anyway, we're going to get into this game. A little bit apprehensive to see how this squad gels together, particularly at the defence. Rev has been out injured, only 79% condition. I'm kind of, I contemplated not playing him. And now I'm thinking about it again. Angela, I'm going to play Angela at centre back. Last minute change. The reason for that being is Rev has been out injured. Only got 78% condition. Lacking a little bit of match fitness because he was injured for a few weeks. So we'll go with Angela there. But we have got the option on the bench if need be. So yeah, Sunderland aren't a bad team, but the the kind of team that if we can beat and get three points again, it's going to be vital in our kind of quest to stay up. The general rule of thumb in the Premier League is that 38 points will keep you safe. That's a point from every game, so that's what we need to be aiming for. So we'll see how we get on today. This is the first game. A little bit apprehensive to see how this system works. Uh, unlike last season where perhaps our quality was able to carry us through, our system is going to be a big kind of influencing factor in how well we play. Um, as you know, we're going to be playing teams with equal if not more quality than ourselves. But anyway, 35 minutes in, looks like we're playing okay at the moment, which is good to see. Uh, and it looks like we're going to go to the break even, which isn't ideal, but it's not bad away from home. I'm happy with your performance so far. Keep it up. Uh, team talks are definitely going to be a lot easier this year um, because there isn't as much expectation on us. I can be a lot less harsh on the players. I mean, I still think we have the quality to stay up this year. And if we can stay up, we've got so many young players in the side that I think we've got enough going about us to kind of keep us going for the future, I suppose. Looking at the stats, we are struggling a little bit for possession. So I am going to change this. I'm going to hit retain possession. Uh, and work ball into the box and switch to a much higher tempo. Really trying to hit the teams on the counter still this year. Obviously last year we chased teams and pushed high up the field in order to play on the break. This year realistically we cannot play an aggressive counter-attacking game against the likes of Manchester United as well, uh, away because if we play a high line we're screwed. Um, five minutes left, a nil-nil. I'd probably take that to be honest against Sunderland. It's the kind of valuable point that um, away from home is always good. When you're a team coming up into the Premier League, home form is what it's all about. Looking at the stats, we've certainly held our own in this game. Um, probably should have made a sub or two. I know someone's going to leave a comment about that. I don't think I needed to. We have got players struggling for fitness. Adrian, fair few players booked as well, but this really has been a bit of a bore draw to kick off the season. Um, ultimately, we didn't look like losing, as the commentator said. That's a good draw at the end of the day. Sacco getting man of the match, which is really good to see. And uh, That's the exact kind of ideal start that I wanted. I mean, it would have been great to get a win, but just to get a point on the board is kind of 
what what we need to do this season, I suppose. Well, the Hughes made his debut. Um, I'm going to do that press conference in a second. Brendan Rodgers um, was checking out the progress of his young Lone Star Sacco. He's not that young at 24, Brendan. You might want to sort out your priorities. Um, but no, I'm just going to check the fixtures. We've got Chelsea coming up next. Obviously, I'm not going to live con that game. I'm thinking the next game I might do... Uh, might be the West Brom game. The reason I'm not going to do the huge games against the massive teams is because, simply put, we're not going to win very many of them. There's going to be maybe the occasional shock. I might do the occasional one in the latter half of the season. But realistically, when you've got Chelsea, Man U and Man City all at once, it's not going to be easy. Actually, looking at our fixtures for the running at the end of the season, we actually have quite a nice finish to the season kind of from Norwich onwards. They're all fairly winnable games, I feel. So that's a kind of a nice thing, but it does mean this first kind of sequence of results could be a little bit tough on us so hopefully we can perform well in this opening of the season uh yeah as i mentioned next update will probably be the west brom game which is in a month uh hopefully you guys are looking forward to that let me know what you made of my summer transfers any that stuck out to you to me reverend sacco at center back are going to be absolutely insane and i'm still not quite sure how i was able to acquire their services um but yeah hopefully they can come good for us uh but other than that guys thank you so much for watching as always if you did enjoy the video hit the like button and other than that guys it is me jack and i will talk to you guys in just a bit i'm out